Hello programmers and welcome back. My name is Chris Franklin and this is our Golang tutorial series on building our own relational database. Now this is the third episode in this series so uh, if you haven't watched the other two episodes I suggest going back and watching those now just so that you have a good foundational understanding of what we're doing because we're starting right in the middle and this is not a good place to start. Uh, so what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to actually take what we did last time and I'm going to undo part of it. So we created our own basic compiler. I have it here. Um, we have some statements. We have our prepare statement. We have all of this here um, that we started building last time, which is great. Uh, it gives us a really good understanding of what we're going to be using, but it's not very practical because building a SQL parser from scratch is a whole project all by itself. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take these these files and I'm going to delete them. Now, uh, hopefully you're not in love with these things. And if you are, I suggest going and figuring out how to do this yourself. But um, to do this, I'm going to close this file. I'm going to delete this compiler package here. All right. And all of our code is going to break when we do this. So I'm going to move this to the trash. It's going to say goodbye. And now all of this stuff is going to break. Our execute, our engine, all of it's now not going to work. And that's great. That's fine. Uh, because that will tell us where we need to go to fix these problems and replace them with something else. So I'm going to go back to my command line here and I'm going to do a go get. Um, and I'm going to grab another package. I'm going to grab github.com slash Mariano... Uh, Mariano Gappa slash SQL P A R S E R. Okay, so the reason I chose this SQL parser, there are a ton of great SQL parsers for Go. The reason I chose this one over the really well tested, really large uh, number of likes and being used in a large number of projects, the reason I chose this one over those is because this is actually the closest to what we started building in the last tutorial. So this is going to be a very similar structure. It's going to be a very similar thing. They're going to use finite state machines for keeping track of the state of the actual parsing. So everything that we were going to start building last time, this has already built for us. So that's why I'm using it. There are other parsers that are built in a similar way, uh, but this is going to be a good place for us to start just so that we can keep things on the same track. We're not going to drastically change our approach to building our... Uh, a relational database. Okay, so now that I've actually um, brought that in using go get, I can inside of my engine.go, this is where I'm going to change my my code here. So instead of using compiler.parse statement, we don't have a compiler package anymore. Um, I'm going to replace the word stmmt with query um, or with q, okay? And the reason we're going to do this is because uh, we've changed the type that we're going to return slightly. We're going to use what's inside of this library, which instead of being called statement is called query. But honestly, it is the exact same thing that we were returning. And then instead of response, I'm going to return an error. OK, so more of a standard um, interface into this package. So I'm going to do SQL P-A-R-S-E-R. And uh, it'll bring that up as an autocomplete here. So that tells us we're going to bring this into this package. And then I'm going to use the parse. Um, now you can also, I, I don't know if you saw it, there's also a parse mini that's included in here, but we don't need to do that. We're going to parse one command at a time. I'm going to pass the string in here. Okay. And instead of res equals equals compiler success, what we're going to look at here is we're going to say if error is nil, then we know that we succeeded and we can pass in the query here. Okay. So I'm going to just save this. This is Now this is going to clean things up for us. It's going to get rid of our import here. But everything else is going to stay the same. We're going to still use an execute statement. We're going to pass in the query. But now our execute is broken. So let's go ahead and go in here and fix that. Instead of using compiler, uh, what we're going to use is this, uh, the SQL parser query. And to do that, uh, I'm going to replace this here. Uh, I'm going to pass in Q. And this is going to be query. And so we're bringing in the query package from Mariano Gappa. And I hit enter here. I hit dot. And then I am going to bring in the query struct here. Okay. So down here, instead of statement, I'm just going to say q.type. And here, instead of compiler.insert, I'm going to replace compiler with query. All right. Query.insert. Oops. I didn't need to hit enter there. And then same thing here query.select. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And there we go. Now we have 
we got rid of our extra package up there. Now if I run this, you should see exactly the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, go run dot. And then I'm going to say insert. I'm going to do an insert statement here. Now if I do that, uh, oh, I didn't hit tab. Insert tab. And I'm going to hit enter. Now what's going to happen is now I'll have this package here. will print stuff out for me. Insert is an invalid query type. And the reason is because I'm not actually, uh, it's not just insert, it's actually insert into, okay? And if I hit enter, now it'll say table name cannot be ent empty. So this is going to be like a real parser. This is gonna show us what kind of commands we can run. Uh, I'm gonna grab a demo uh, a demo query here that we can we can run. Um, so let's let's go in here and grab something. Sorry, I'm I'm pulling up. I didn't have this ready to go. So if I do, for instance, a select. Okay, so we know that, that we support select. So if I paste this in, so I'm going to do a select A from B, okay? I'm going to hit enter. And now all of a sudden, we're in our code where this is where we would do a select. Okay, that's it. That's all for this lesson. It's going to be nice and short. We're just, all we're doing is we're taking what we started building last time and we're, we're replacing it with a real SQL query parser. Now, this is still very simple compared to some of the SQL query parsers that exist out there, okay? You can dig through this code, you can see how it works, but this is going to capture most cases that we care about for this tutorial series, okay? So don't worry about anything else outside of that. You can always, if you decide to follow, uh, to move forward and build more complicated uh, database, you can look at some of the other SQL query parsers that exist, or you can build your own parser from scratch if you really want to challenge yourself. But that's it for today. Hopefully you understand what this was, what we were doing here. And hopefully this helps you start to see how we're going to be able to build this out into a real relational database, okay? If you have any questions, again, post them in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts, your feelings, anything that you want to know in further lessons. I really appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.